Welcome to Paddle Diaries, where this week we're going to explain why we have our washing in our opening credits. In November 2017, we moved to the beautiful Ynys Morn, the island of Anglesey in northwest Wales, to begin the adventure of developing a 12 acre small holding and planting a church, all while learning to be parents for the first time. Moving to a tiny rural village called Paradis, which is Welsh for paradise, our pioneering journey has seen us venture way out of our comfort zone, trying new things, succeeding at some and facing challenges in others. This is our way to share our journey, encourage you with yours, and of course, share plenty of inspiring scenery and cute shots of animals and our young family. We are the Radbourne family, and this is Paradis Diaries. So welcome to Paradis Diaries. You will be very pleased to see that I have lovely Rachel joining me um, on the couch this week. This is quite a chilled out vibe it's for the start of an episode, isn't it? Usually outside. Yeah. Just shows it's getting dark outside and when you can't record with two children, you end up recording later in the evening when it's dark. <laughs> so you've got to do it inside. But also because this week we are um, going to show you a little bit and explain why we have this clip in our opening credits of what basically looks like our washing but they're all of the reusable nappies that we have started to use. Uh, I say we, the royal we, <laughs> that Rachel has been using with this. Uh, so this episode, we're going to just show you a little bit about reusable nappies. It's going to have some really useful information if that is of interest to you. It's just going to explore a little bit why of that. And for those of you that more follow it to see pictures of animals, um, <laughs> we'll see you next week. So... <laughs> <laughs> So, um, Rach, on this episode, you're going to take us through a little bit about washing them, mm -hmm. uh, how to do that, the designs, which is a really big thing in the reusable nappy yeah, world. It is. And um, what's stuffing and getting them ready. Yeah. Um, and then we'll also talk a little bit um, about the cost and that sort of implication and what it's been like, some top tips. And, yeah, we'll try and make sure that this isn't the longest episode we've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all let's start with um washing the nappies i think that's a good place to start okay yeah i think it's often the question that most people ask or are grossed out at, at the idea of reusable nappies yeah so um here's reg showing us a little bit of how to wash reusable nappies Bye, <laughs> So, uh, we're about to do a nappy change, um, and so just going to show you how easy it is. This, pop a, so you just take that off, and I've got, this one's a different one, this is a Velcro one, uh, so just take that off, pop it in my nappy bag on the back of the door, and pop the fresh one off, and then we're good to go, aren't we? <laughs> So what I do is, if I think he's due for a poo, I put these like fleecy liners in. Just makes it easier then um, to catch the poo and then like lick it down the toilet. There we go, Fleece. How do you feel now that you've got a new nappy on? <laughs> okay, so um, you're probably wondering how do you store smelly pooey nappies? It's a very good question. Um, so I, there's lots of different ways you can use a bin, uh, you can get special like nappy bins with a lid, but what I love are these wet bags, so these are Baba and Boo ones, I just think they're phenomenal, so this is the large size, so I have two um, on the go, and so this one is obviously full, and I'm too lazy to zip it up in between, so I just keep it open unless it really smells, and so what we do is we're going to take this downstairs to the washing machine, um, and then I'll show you how easy it is to wash reusable nappies. So the important thing to remember if you use a bag system, the wet bag system, is as you put it in, make sure it's unzipped. And so literally all you do is I put this bag unzipped in the washing machine 
And then I start off by just putting it on a rinse. And what that does is just kind of rinse out all the wee and any bit of like poo that might be left. So as you saw earlier, the first bit of the major poo you kind of flick down the toilet. So the major part of the poo goes down the toilet and then any like smeared still on the nappies or wee, you do a rinse first. And then once the rinse is finished, we're then gonna do a really hot wash with non-bio detergent. So there we go, that is washing your nappies. And I'll be honest, our washing machine is on so often now that it is genuinely on a lot more than the TV is. So much so that Rhys um, seems to believe that it is the TV. Um, as Rach captured on um, her phone the other day. That good shoes. <laughs> Who needs TV, eh? <laughs> so, yeah, funny, isn't it? It's a bit worrying. Really. It is a bit but worrying. But to be well, fair, I know people who use it to get their babies to sleep. It is mesmerising. The washing machine, the white noise. Really? Like, yeah, stick them in a pram in front of the washing machine and it's just like relaxes them, sends them off to sleep. It's why hoovering when they're babies as well, doesn't it? That sends them off to sleep. There we go. Mm. So once they've come out of the washing machine, Rach, yeah. you've then got to get them ready again because they're all in different bits. And this is the bit that terrifies me because there's like 17 different sections to each <laughs> nappy. No, so no. <laughs> explain, what is okay. that all about? Um, yeah, so um, the drying side of things to start off with is great in the summer. If it's sunny, you can obviously just get them out on the on the line and dry them, and that's so much better. But you can't really tumble dry them, or if you know some some certain nappies you can, but very low heat. So generally, they've got to be dried away from direct contact with the heat source. So you need some sort of good drying system in your home, um, particularly in winter. And then, yeah, put the mats dry and then stuffing, which is, I actually, I know this is weird, but there's other mums I've spoken to who use reusable nappies actually agree with me there, with this. There is something really therapeutic about stuffing your nappies. And I don't know, I can't explain it. It's just when you're stuffing them with their boosters or their pads and you just see them then in the basket all nice and clean and the beautiful prints and you just know that it's like, oh yes, these aren't going in the bin. These are just going back on the bottom and just reuse and reuse and reuse. I don't know, I find it really therapeutic. It's like 10 minutes every other day where I just get to myself just stuffing my nappy. Rachel's not had many hobbies recently, so so give give her that time. No, it's good. It's lovely that like the passion for it, and it's amazing. There is this subculture in society that um, really does exist, and people obsess about it, especially with the designs. Like that is a really big thing, isn't it? It it can become a little bit addictive. This is my like I guess health warning on reusable nappies. Only go into it if you have good self-control. And I have mastered self-control. And there's a few reusable nappy groups on Facebook I've had to come off because it was just getting all too much and a bit too intense. And um, I, I was getting just too tempted to buy more nappies and when I didn't need them. And it defeats the point if you have so many reusables. Mm -hmm. Like, actually, the cost of it and the amount of still the plastic on the waterproof section. For me, it defeats the... The, the eco point. The eco it. point. If you get to have obsessed. that much like cotton, because you know yes, the, exactly, the way it, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. So go into it and just have some self control and just have. What, it's like with everything, isn't it? Just take what you need. Just don't get greedy. Um, but yeah, the prints are beautiful. There's all sorts of different brands, and they bring out different collections. So the Autumn Collection has just come out with a lot of brands. 
Some of them are really beautiful. There's a hedgehog name, one. Name, name a drop a through. You see, if we were so, if we were bigger, we'd now name drop, and it would be a subtle way of us earning fifty quid. There's but a unfortunately, top it's easy for it's all star hedgehog one that I have been eyeing up, uh, but. We don't have the funds yet, so but I'll there just we go. Sort of a bit. So we've been doing it now pretty much since Therese was born, actually, because yeah. we entered lockdown and it was a perfect time to yeah. try it. Yeah. Um, and it's gone pretty well. What are your kind of main top tips on it? What's yeah? yeah. I would definitely um, search out your nappy library. So most places in the UK have a local nappy library these days. Yeah, luckily, it was just before lockdown when I was still pregnant with Therese and I went da down to a demonstration and hired a newborn um, hiring kit. Because there's all different types there's as well. There's loads of different so types. Where they fit and you've got to and find the one that suits you They're best. drying times because they're different materials, different brands and stuff. So it, it does depend on what your setup is. So if you haven't got a lot of space to dry and stuff, then you want quick drying ones, but they'll be less absorbent. So it, it's very much like the sort Sorry. of space you've got in your home, whether you've got a... Um, like tumble dry and things like that that all go into what sort of nappies you need and what sort of baby if you have a chubby baby or a skinny baby a tall baby and we've got a chubby baby we've got a chubby baby skinny. so nappy library definitely would be the thing i would go to first so here i am with some of Lisa's nappies just for you to see so um this one was one i got second hand i actually get these from aldi sometimes when they're in but it's an all-in-one so it's dead easy it's like a disposable so um some nappy purists don't really rate this brand, but I actually think, you know, if you like dads or grandparents or childminders or nurseries, they're like really, really similar to disposable. They're really easy. You've got like a pocket nappy. So this is a Babber and Boo um, pocket. And the reason it's called a pocket is it's got a pocket there. And you put the bamboo inserts in there. So I love Babber and Boo. They're like one of my favourite brands and Close Poppin another one that I love so they're good because their inserts just pop in so the drying it's got a wrap separate and this pops in and pops out Happy. and they really vary in cost so these start at like £16 the um the pocket nappies but second hand you can get really good quality like barely used for like 12 13 11 um these ones i got for like eight quid second hand and they're fan they're like they're fantastic and then the other things that i would really recommend if you're using reusable nappies already is um reusable wipes there are i actually think they're much better to use than um than disposable wipes because you get much better grip on all the wee and poo and just clean like you get a much better clean bottom there's no chemicals on them or anything and um you just shove them in the nappy bag same as the nappy so it's really easy so I would definitely go for it. Probably cost us to set up. I've got about 20 nappies all together and that'll do me every two days. So I only do a wash every other day. And that costs us an investment of about 240 quid. But that's with a few, like, probably about two thirds that I bought second hand. All right. So as you can see, like the thing that I love about this and the reason why I wanted to do this is one, because we needed to explain why on our opening credits we have um, a, a shot of some nappies and we've never explained it and it's it's quite odd but that's one reason and secondly just as you can see Rachel's passion for it and this idea of us having our small holding with the animals and with the different ways that we manage to land like next week I'm going to show you a bit more about our biomass boiler and our woodlands and kind of how that sort of circular system of our own heating production comes through and how there's carbon neutrality in that and there is something around us uh, making sure that we are doing all we can to um, live in a sustainable way and this is one of them and as you can see Rachel's passion for it and her knowledge is outrageously good. So that's all we've got time for this week. I hope you have enjoyed um, hearing Rachel's heart and passion for her eco nappies. And we will see you next week when I continue kind of the eco theme looking at our wood boiler and our woodlands. And um, yeah, we will see you next time on Parapus Diaries.
rather than filling a landfill with uh, the disposable ones, which is very much Rach's, um, is it weird to say passion? Um, no. No, it's it become, is, it's it become, has become a bit of a passion. A passion is a nicer way than saying obsession. I so, am definitely not obsessed. <laughs> I follow people that are obsessed. Okay. I'm not obsessed. So this episode, we're going to just show you.